I'm Rijn van der Laar, I'm a sleep scientist and I'm standing here in front of a unibed, which is a, one of the prehistoric remains. And the strong connection with my book is that I, in my book I talk about sleep in prehistoric people, in cavemen, and the title of the book is also called How to Sleep Like a Caveman. The reason I wrote this book is because I myself have suffered from insomnia for several years. And when I wanted to get help uh, in my general physician, they were not able to help me uh, in a proper way. So I suffered from the problem much longer than I should. And um, then I started working as a sleep scientist and I found out that the treatment of insomnia, treatment of sleep problems is actually quite simple. One thing I would like to do is inform people about the different options you have to uh, treat insomnia, to get them to have more knowledge about sleep and in this way uh, create a better world maybe. For a lot of people, changing your bedtimes and your bed ritual is actually quite enough to uh, have quite big, big results when you look at sleep. And uh, that was one of the biggest things I found out. Well, as a sleep researcher, I was used to writing scientific articles, which is uh, using a very different language than in popular science. So I thought it was really a challenge to uh, convert the data, convert the articles to something that everybody would understand, but I hope I succeeded in it. I think the most important thing that I found out while I was writing this book was that uh, as, a, as a former insomniac, uh, I sometimes still have nights in which I am awake, uh, sometimes more than an hour, sometimes more than two. What I've learned is that uh, it's nothing to worry about, that uh, lying awake itself is often not the problem, but the problem is how you lie awake. Are you tense or are you relaxed? So that's what helps me uh, get through my nights better if I sometimes have a bad period. I think an important finding uh, that I describe in the book is that sleep medication in itself, and especially the benzodiazepines, are called sleep medication, but are actually anti-wake medication because they don't really lead to a better sleep. What they do is they give the feeling of not being awake. But if you look at the sleep quality of people using benzodiazepines, then you see that their sleep quality actually deteriorates. And if you look at stimulants, so the use of drugs or the use of nicotine or caffeine, then this also can have a negative effect on sleep, especially if you use it in high amounts. The most important myth I've discovered while writing this book is the myth of you need eight hours of sleep. There is so much attention to this principle and what we know is that it's actually really a myth because most people sleep between six and eight hours and only 30% of all people, of all adults, sleep eight hours or more. So um, for a lot of people it's not even possible to sleep eight hours and um, if you constantly hear this remark, you have to sleep eight hours, it can be quite frustrating and it also does not contribute to a better night's rest. In the book I address uh, different environmental factors such as light and temperature because they are very important when you look at, uh, at sleep, at how to create a, a good sleep. So uh, what I'm talking about is uh, how to create an optimal environment when you look at light, daytime light, nighttime light, but also at how to use temperature, ambient temperature to create a better night's rest. I think the book has sold in so many countries because uh, the subject of sleep is universal. Everybody sleeps, but there are also many people who suffer from sleep problems. And actually we see that this problem is only increasing. So I think a lot of people want to sleep better and uh, really want to focus on a better sleep. And uh, that's why the subject and also the book, How to Sleep Like a Caveman, is there's so much interest for it. My main advice for readers would be uh, to really look at their own expectations around sleep, to not believe everything they see in the media, and maybe the last thing would be to read my book.